Join with me today is uh, Rodrigo Blankenship, and you're the, the kicker for the Indiana Colts, that's right? Yeah, Indianapolis Colts, that's and, right. And I don't know you for that. I know you as a hardcore Marvel Strike Force player. I, that's how I know you. You're, I mean, we I, we play against your alliance, and I'm attacking against your team, and you play Marvel Strike Force like every single day. You're hardcore into this game. That's right. Yes, uh, I'm a global launch player. I think I uh, downloaded the game maybe like one or two days after global launch. One of my teammates from when I was in college was like, "Rod, I know you're a big Marvel guy. You got to check out this new Strike Force game." And uh, so I started playing basically a global launch and I'm uh, pretty serious about it, much to the dismay of my wife. She's uh, <laughs> always gets a little upset with the amount of time that uh, I spend in the game. But uh, yeah, I, I am a pretty serious player. I think my TCP is around 21 million. Oh my God. Um, I've been playing for you know a really long time and um, you know obviously really love Marvel. I'm a really big Marvel guy. And so the, the chance that I get to play with all these beloved characters has really drawn me to the game. So. Yeah, pretty hardcore player. And yeah, it was cool to go up against your alliance uh, a few wars ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was pretty excited on stream to take on your team. And uh, <laughs> the the reason why we're chatting today is because you messaged me and uh, you are worried about the state of the game. And you have been trying to reach out uh, to Bill Roseman, who is uh, head honcho over there at Marvel Games that may have some impact on the game because I, 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 and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I feel like um, a lot of things are going on in the game and nobody's listening. Is that, is that, is that where you're coming from? I mean, that's what I got out of, out of your message. Yeah. You know, that definitely seems to be what's going on where, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of issues and a lot of, problems going on with the game and you know a large percentage of the community is pretty upset with the current state of the game and um you know i feel like all of you content creators you know a lot of you guys are in the envoy program have been trying to advocate for the larger community and you know tell the, the developer team you know kind of what the pulse is of the community and you know basically from all of your guys's videos right. it really sounds like they're not really listening to they're really listening to us no, and that's why I wanted to bring you on because uh, you have some influence, and but yet you're still an everyday player, right? Like, or a, a person that loves this game, right? You play the game every day, yeah. And and yet, uh, I I, I kind of wonder if, um, like, I got put into this category of like an echo chamber, like they're not listening to me anymore at all, uh, or or even Reddit for that matter. It's just like, oh, you guys just all say the same thing, and they're ignoring everybody. But it's not just you. Uh, and I'm going to read what you sent me because I thought it, it, it was a very strong message. But it's not just you. We had uh, Game Informer, Brian Shea, write an article on Game Informer. And, and Game Informer is big. I mean, they're the, they're the largest, right? They're the largest, right? Yeah, and, and, and Brian has come uh, and, and spoke with me twice now, right? And he's a, he's a daily player like yourself. And, and, he just is, and, and he's an industry insider. And he's scratching his head like, what's going on, right? And... And this article really was like um, resonated with me because I feel like I was trying to say this and yet he put it into words that, you know, he's a better writer than I am. Right. And and and, and they're going to listen to him. Then then we have David Brevik, you know, the, the, the founder of Marvel Heroes, you know, and he's an industry insider and he plays the game every day. And he's been mm -hmm. on two. He's been on McMull's and, and, and on my channel uh, saying the same a lot of the same things like. People are coming out of the woodworks to say that the game is bad and nobody's listening. What's what's your take on all that? Yeah, you know, it's definitely, um, you know, I think just kind of speaks to the power of Marvel and just kind of the, you know, the influence that it has on its fans because all of these people that genuinely love the Marvel IP and genuinely love this game are, you know, trying to come together and try and speak on behalf of each other to, you know, bring about positive change for for the game because we all love these Marvel characters. We all love this game and are incredibly invested in it with our time and money. So, you know, it, it really speaks to just how much we care about, you know, the Marvel IP and these characters that we want to see this game change for the better. Yeah. And then uh, I, and I think that's, that's the point I want to make here before I, I read it. What, what you sent me is that I, you're not just complaining for the sake of complaining. You're, you're complaining be you, you want the game to be better. Absolutely. And, and the game is in a weird place right now, and it feels like nothing is happening. So uh, I'm going to read what, what you sent, Bill Bill Roseman, and hopefully uh, this the word gets out. Uh, and, and this all started with a Reddit post where, uh, you know, 
someone was talking about how unhappy with the state of the game and how they don't, they, you know, the boycotts have been unsuccessful, downvoting the app store is unsuccessful. And he talks about contacting people like Brian Shea to write articles. And then he gets down to this. Secondly, uh, we brought our problems with the game to the attention of Bill Roseman, the VP and creative director of Marvel Games. For those who don't know, Marvel Games oversees the Marvel IP when it comes to video games. Longtime Mar employee at Marvel and is very passionate about and protective of the Marvel brand. Once he became involved, things uh, improved very quickly with the game and the developers actually started communicating with us. And, and this has to do with the problem, I believe, that happened. He's talking about a situation that happened in Marvel Conscious of Champions. Do you ever play Marvel Conscious of Champions? I did play Marvel Contest of Champions a long time ago, and I was uh, I was subscribed to Seton Man of Legends. Oh, there you and, go. Uh, but uh, I'd watch a lot of his videos. But yeah, I, I did used to play a long time ago, but it just got to the point where I wasn't skilled enough to, to keep up with the most difficult content. Yeah, it's a, I, it's, I a, it, it's, a, it's a twitchy game. I mean, it's an eye-hand coordination game, yeah. So, uh, And then at this time, our best way to get intention is to tweet Bill Rose and Marvel Games and leave posts on the Marvel Facebook game. Now, I actually tweeted at him this exact Reddit post, and I heard nothing. Uh, and I thought that maybe uh, he would, like, pick up, you know, I don't know, but maybe he doesn't follow me. So more people do this, the better. Hopefully some of our contrarians picked up on this. I did. I know Tana has. We can't rely on them to do all the work. Please share this in your Alliance Discord. If you don't use Discord, we can talk about global chat, make it a community-wide thing. Beauty of this tactic is inclusive, and nobody has to change how they play the game. Uh, and then I don't, I don't think we should be harassing him with negative things, but I, I like the way this post says... Some things to tweet, mention in tweets are game crashes, bugs that have been around forever, prices that keep going up, the game quality goes down, changing Marvel lore just so they can control gear bottlenecks, Morbius being mystic, Kit being tech. You can link the Game Informer article or YouTube videos about the state of the game and talk about how they keep us in the dark about events until the last minute leaving Alliance leader, content creator scrambling and piece it together. Yeah, oh, th these Alliance events are require spreadsheets to understand sometimes. Like some of these... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 they come out and I'm looking at it like, I, I, I don't know. I need like a spreadsheet to figure out this, this milestone event. And they're, they're so convoluted and they change every single time. Oh, mm -hmm. anyways. Um, so you sent him a message. What, what was the, the I'm going to show it here on the screen and tell me what, what you were trying to say and, uh, what, what the, the, what were you hoping to accomplish with this? Yeah, I mean, you know, I tried to, you know, as precisely as I could just kind of lay out the, the biggest issues, um, you know, that the, the community is feeling and just like the major sore spots that are causing a lot of frustration with uh, with the community right now. And just tried to lay it all out for him. And um, there's links to probably about eight of your videos and a few videos from Philosopher and Valley Flying as well. I sent some links to several videos from, you know, you guys who are, you know, very trusted uh, voices for the community and you know we rely on you guys for a lot of information and to hopefully be able to relay you know the pulse of the community to the developers um i just tried to kind of lay it all out and say like these are some of the things that the community's you know really upset about and it seems like the developers aren't really listening to the content creators or the wider community at large so you know i know you're kind of uh have a, a position of authority within the marvel games hierarchy so hopefully if you see this you know you can kind of light a fire under the developers to start making some change that will benefit the game and bring people back to the game because I know that, you know, Reminex probably just represents a, you know, he represents a percentage of people who right. have probably left the game recently because of all the, uh, you know, the, the kind of negative that's been going on with the game. Right. And what, what, what's what been the, the thing that's affected you the most in your, in your, your dissatisfaction of the game? What do you, what do you think, or what hit, what's hit you the most personally? Um, Honestly, I think that the like the demand for for screen time, which I didn't even you know touch on here, but that's just kind of been something that's kind of compounded and accumulated as the game has gone on. We've added more game modes, and it's just taking more and more screen time. And you know, kind of like I joked about earlier, um, you know, sometimes our, our significant others or you know people that we spend time with can, could potentially get a little upset because the game demands so much time of us to be able to keep up and you know play at any kind of competitive level you have to be on at certain times for when your raids start and alliance wars and you know arena payout like you need to be playing the game a large amount of time every day to to kind of keep up with the joneses or to kind of stay where you're at at your current level and it, it's just a it's a lot to handle so just kind of the the screen time is just accumulated over the years that the game has been going and that's something that has been you know really 
uh, you know, a little bit of a sore spot for me is just how much time I have to spend, you know, on this game. I, I, I got to ask you a question. Like, have you ever like been out to dinner or something and like gone to the restroom to do something on the game? And like, you really didn't have to go to the restroom, but you just went to the re- <laughs> Have you ever had to do that? Yeah, a- absolutely. <laughs> It's, it's crazy, right? And, and I think most, I, I think anybody that's played this game, I, I mean, I remember needing to get my war attacks in or something. And I just like, yeah, I'll be back. I got to use the restroom. And I'm literally in the bathroom doing, playing my game. Oh my God. And, you know, and, and, and I know she's thinking like, you're playing your game. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. They know. They know. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And I, oh my God. That's so funny. And I, so I, I got to ask you another question. I asked you this a little bit before. What are you What are you doing uh, now off season? Uh, what is your What does your schedule look like? And 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 show us your transformers, which I, I just is like I, I got to see them. Right? Show us. So, so what's going on with your world right now? Yeah, sure. So um, you know, right now the uh, <laughs> NFL season is we're not in season. We're in the off season. Um, and so you know, I, I play for the Indianapolis Colts, and so I live in a town called Carmel, Indiana, which is on the north side of town. Um, but I, I'm not there right now. I'm in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, my, my kicking coach that I have worked with for a very long time, he lives here. And so I come down here every off season, uh, to, you know, to train with him and just kind of a side note, it always seems like I'm in Birmingham when something like a major kind of sore spot in the game happens. Like, I think I was in Birmingham last summer. I think it was when the silver surfer offer thing was going around and I was in, Birmingham, I think the previous February or March, whenever it was, when the uh, Fix MSF movement was going on. So yep. it seems like whenever I come down to Birmingham, something bad ends up going on in the game. You no, know, this so. is this is the this is the third time in a, a third year in a row where it's fell apart yeah. at this time of year. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, and I think it has to do with that they. T- I don't know what kind of break they take or, uh, during Christmas, but it seems unusually long, and everything falls apart, and we start feeling it like this time every year. And yeah. so, and so you're, you're, you're training every day. And that's, I think that's one of the things that blows my mind is that, that, that there's public figures that have a lot of the same interests that I have. And that there's like <laughs> nerdy people playing <laughs> football too. You were telling me you just bought a bunch of transformers, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, um, I stumbled upon a, an antique shop. Um, that was about five minutes from, you know, this Airbnb that I'm staying at and they had a bunch of like really old transformers this is just like one of them but i've got like kind of i got a there's another trash bag of these sitting on the floor next to me and they both got like <laughs> you know three or four a piece in them um but uh these tra- these transformers are like 10 11 years old like they're they're not just something you could go with walk into walmart and get like they're things that you know that came out a long time ago and i was kind of like the peak of my my transformer collecting um kind of like the late 2000s early 2010s um i had a lot of first gen transformers by the way way oh, from, yeah. from way and i destroyed them like like i had them you, you know what i'm talking about those and then i would i go on ebay and they're thousands of dollars that i just like i can't believe i i played with these in the sandbox out in the dirt you know what i mean like i, I yeah. mean and you know the all all of the first generations you know it's it's a funny thing how that works out right yeah yeah the g1 is g1 transformers are the best if you have those that are still in like the original packaging they go for a pretty penny on on ebay and stuff like that yeah okay well i i hope that uh we we get some resolution if not from uh I'm I'm hoping that 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 the that the people at scopely boundless uh you know are 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 uh, proactive and 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 do something sooner than later, and and I and I I think they need to start with some uh, verbal posts, you know, that are just talk, but then actually follow up with it. And uh, screen time uh, is a big issue for me. I mean, I, I I specifically the the gamma raids, like the alpha beta gamma, you know, the the Greek raids. Like, what's the point of that? I I yeah. I, I have to do it every single day. I know I can do it. I've been doing it for a year. Why am I doing this? I, I don't even understand. Like, or in, in blitzing and RTA and I, I, and it's like, it's not fun and it's not, I, I just have to do it. I, I don't know. It seems like, uh, it's not much of a game at all when, when like, I don't mind the doom raids cause they're actually hard, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, but this stuff and, and I'm not even sure. And I'm going to, I'm going to call out the developers on this. 
You, you know that there was that. Remember when they accidentally in the in the game showed the Sim Blitz raid, uh, Sim Blitz and Sim raid before the Sim Blitz came out? Yeah, I do remember seeing the uh, the Sim button on the raids a while ago. I believe, and I and I I'm pretty sh I'm 99% sure of this that that was a feature coded into the game for the developers because they couldn't be bothered to play those parts of the game themselves. Oh, that's a hot take. I, it could it could be true, but yeah, like no, the developers is. are not even the developers can't be bothered to play the Greek raids themselves, and they have a button to sim past it because they don't have enough time. Yet we're forced to do it, and I don't think that's right. And and I and I and I don't think I'm wrong about this. I think that's exactly what it is. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, some of these issues. And I know Philosopher's been talking about screen time. Anton, Atana's last video, a lot of it was about screen time. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it's uh, you know if they're gonna I, and I I just played the Cosmic Crucible mode and I thought it was fun. Like I would rather do that than than mm -hmm. than a Greek raid. And you know, and and same thing with the tower mode. I thought the tower mode was interesting, better than what we have. But yeah, I don't want to do all of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. They gotta they gotta pull something out if they're gonna add more. Uh, anything else you want to say before you go? Um, I mean, I would just want to like touch on you know your comments about the new game modes. Yeah, I I do really enjoy Avengers Tower. I I liked it. There, you know, there's a little bit of extra theory crafting that has to go into it because the opponents don't just have to be like one of each character. You know, you could have uh, an Asgardians or a Wave 1 Avengers that has two Thors. And if you're not careful, you get double retaliation on your, you know, fourth or fifth attack, whatever it may be. So Avengers Tower is definitely something that I enjoy. And I did used to also play uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. So I am looking forward to Cosmic Crucible because it does bring over a lot of those same traits from uh what is it uh, grand arena yeah it's a little bit watered down but i i think it's still good yeah so i i am definitely looking forward to that as well but you know i definitely think you're right on the nose about if you're going to introduce you know these new game modes their new game modes excuse me there needs to be something that gets pulled away whether you know that be giving us the sim for the greek grade so we can reduce that time and it can be given to another game mode you know there definitely is you know a give and take there yeah I think I think you're 100 percent on. All right. Well, hopefully we get some positive change in the uh, you know between. I, I I hope we get something before Friday. You know, maybe on the blog post, but we'll have to see. And uh, be sure to follow Rodrigo on. Uh, I follow you on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. And I know you're you're really big on Instagram. So uh, there you <laughs> go. Right. Yep. Rod the kicker three. Pretty much everywhere. There you go. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And keep on gaming.